So when did uh, public involvement become a consideration in clinical trials? I think you'd have to go back to the late 80s and early 90s when I think there were some significant patient uh, communities, patient groups that were really challenging the way that clinical trials and clinical research was being done at that time. Perhaps the most celebrated um, patient community that was at the forefront of this is the HIV AIDS community who were really you know, pushing against and challenging I think the way that clinical trials have been done up until then. But there was also I think in the early 90s evolving from that uh, a sense of other patient groups and patient leaders coming together who were perhaps representative of a very strong advocacy model and who were saying to themselves actually this you know, the way that research is currently done is not reflective of patient need it's not reflective of uh, what patients actually want out there. How do we begin to change the system? How do we break down some of the cultures that exist around science and actually are exclusive and prevent uh, patients and, and carers from having a, a say in, in how that's influenced and shaped? And so, early 90s, you begin to see the first group formed within the Department of Health to advise the then Director of uh, Research and Development about how to make research much more patient orientated. But then you probably jump until around 2006 and I think that's a critical moment for the history of the movement because that's the point at which the National Institute for Health Research was developed itself and actually took Involve under its wing and actually then gave it um, you know, a sustainable and solid future. It gave it funding, it uh, enabled it to recruit staff to promote what it did, it said it was going to make public involvement a core principle of how itself, how it itself funded research. So that was a very, very, very important move, I think, to see NIHR do that. And I think that sent a very strong signal across the clinical research uh, community. And then since then, I think you've seen steady milestones. So another one I would point to is the whole development of the James Lind Alliance Priority Setting Partnerships, which I think have been a very, they have been a very clear example of how you can bring a robust methodology to apply to public involvement in setting research priorities in a condition area. So there's been 13, 14 of those partnerships now, there are another 10 on the go. They bring clinicians and they bring patients and carers together to set the, set the treatment priorities for the future. So that's another uh, step. And then I think we're now coming into things like the development of the clinical research networks across uh, across England and actually in the, in the um, devolved administrations as well. And I think what the networks began to do is turn what we had already been doing quite in quite a broad way into a, so almost like an engine of public involvement. You know, growing communities of patients, carers, interested public who, who are actually applying themselves to the research on a day-to-day -day basis. So we were actually beginning to create quite research active communities in those networks. So that was really fundamentally important because you then begin to have the feel of a, a movement and a population that's allied behind a particular cause or a particular way of doing things. Part of the, part of the way that the National Institute for Health Research wants to, I think, um, uh, develop a better approach to access to research for patients and, and carers, the citizen, one dimension of that is about giving people the ability to use research evidence much more as part of the de deliberation or discussion they have with their doctor about their treatment. So uh, being able to question the treatment they're being given on the basis of their own search and their own access to research papers or research evidence. So open access is a very important part of that. So. I think there's some ongoing challenges that the, the perennial ones that probably are still there, um, the, the same ones as were there 10 years ago or 20 years ago. One is we still have an attitudinal shift to encourage amongst researchers and clinicians. There's still that job to be done. I think the real challenge there is uh, getting to people who are early in their training uh, whether as a researcher or as a clinician, to get them to really understand the role that public involvement could do as in terms of helping them to do the research. Because often the perception is, 
either it's political correctness or it's something that's going to actually slow them down. And actually, if you look at the evidence, that's quite the, quite the reverse. It can be that if you don't do it in the right way and in a way that's focused around what you need from a research point of view. So I think that whole um, attitudinal cultural change thing remains, and it probably will always be there because, because that's the nature of the, nature of the, the beast. I think one of the challenges for us as a community of people doing public involvement is to make it as easy and as simple as people to join us. So one of the criticisms I would have with, with some of my uh, colleagues at times is that we've, be, we've almost set up our own industry or it feels like that and actually we have a language and a jargon that surrounds public involvement that can be equally as uh, impenetrable as the jargon that lives around research or the NHS. And we have to make it really simple and easy for people to contribute to what we're doing and enable them to do that in the way that they feel most comfortable. And I think the other thing is about how do we really embed it into practice? So how do we normalise this activity? It's still very much a, an add-on for quite a lot of institutions especially. I would argue less so for some research teams, but for institutions especially. So how do we embed it into that? And I think that's what our review breaking boundaries is partly about, is about trying to say, how do you really make this part of you know, normal business life out there for the way that research is done? And how do we have a very strong partnership a model for working with patients and carers in doing all forms of research, not just clinical research, but health and social care, public health research, you, you name it.